Real news. Real issues. Real people. It's Ciola Wilson, one on one. Ooh, heading into your 11th year celebrations. You know, past 11,000 people certified. We are. What we are you are aiming sure. for? 53,000. So that's the adult population. 10 Bermuda. years, what's that going to take another? I don't think, I can't think about it like that, Ciola. All, I, all we just want is every adult to hear this message. That's it. So let's talk about the adults who will hear this message because this is about the experience of getting certified. You think three hours, I'm going to fit that in. But what about the single parent mothers? But you know, in real life, it might be one thing to get certified, but your real life issues, you know, I'm living in a house, it's 10 of us, two bedrooms, people sleeping in shifts, children are home, people are not working, a lot of unsupervised stuff, you know, what's the answer? Because this is every day in certain areas. We know about it. It doesn't matter, like you said, it doesn't discriminate, doesn't matter if you live in Middletown or Tuckestown, but it's everywhere. So a lot of what we're seeing playing out is damage from household issues. Part of that is sexual abuse. Some of it is just abuse, period. So what do you say to that woman who's got three jobs, don't have time, of course, the living is crazy, and she's got to work to keep a roof over that here. I would say fight for your children's safety. Do whatever you can. Speak to other adults. Say, I want to do the SCARS training. There's no cost. I need to do this training for my children. I need someone to support me. I mean, find somebody that you feel safe with, that you know will genuinely care for your children for three hours. Um, listen to your instinct. Um, you know, you're investing in your child by taking this training, by sitting there for three hours and making yourself, um, you know, empowered, educated. Find someone to support you. You know, someone you work with, somebody who is, you know, unless you're an only child or, you know, you have no aunts or uncles or grandparents or somebody in your life that you trust and that you care about and you know genuinely cares for you, reach out to them and say, I want to do this training. This is important. I want to make sure my children are safe. I want to develop this relationship with my children that they'll, be, that they'll feel safe to tell me anything about anyone. I want to be able to let my children know that they're important, that their body is important, that they should not be um, you know, allowing anybody to touch you or take pictures. I want to learn about how I can teach my children that. Um, find a way because this is life-saving information and it will save your child years, years of pain if they know that if I can just tell my mom that somebody is making me feel uncomfortable, even if it's their boyfriend, or if I can tell my dad, even if it's his best friend, that he's doing something to me that makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, that is empowering your child to know I care about you. I care about your safety. Um, and and I, and I want to make sure that you are safe. This information is vital information so for what, children. So would your advice be to a 20-year-old girl who's got issues with her father? Her biggest problem is that he's all in the church, but is still best friends with his best friend who raped her when she was eight. Tell someone. Tell someone. Let someone know. But Call she told someone. him. And it well, will appear he doesn't care. Well, grown-ups don't always do the right thing. People don't always make choices, and there's many reasons for that. Find someone that will. Find someone that will listen and help you do something to stop the behavior and to support you. So you guys spent a lot of time talking to the group about empowerment skills and the five steps in identifying how to protect. One of the biggest things that came out is if your child comes to him and says, Uncle Johnny did whatever, it's not to freak out. No. How do you not freak out though? Well, so you, 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 let me you answer that first. You come to a SCARS train and you practice. Right. What's the empowerment skills and the five steps to identifying? 
Yeah, so the, the empowerment skills that the Darkness Delight Stewards of Children training teaches is making choices, taking risks, and supporting each other. Making choices is making a choice whether we're going to talk to our children early and often about body safety. That's a choice. Um, it, we may leave that up to the school or somebody else to do, but, you know, it's not a one-time conversation. Um, so, we, you know, it's about making choices. It's about making choice whether you're going to be SCAR certified. You know, it's, it's an empowerment skill just to come into a SCAR's room and get trained and educated and, you know, in this issue, on this issue. Or um, it could be a choice that you've got to run in on your husband. Exactly right. It's a choice whether you're going to do the right thing and report child sexual abuse. It's a crime. Um, no matter who it is, no one's above the law. It, it, it is about making choices, and we should all have choices. Um, but that is one of the empowerment skills, making a choice to get educated, making a choice to talk to our children about body safety, making a choice to make a report. Taking a risk means taking a risk to call out somebody who's crossing the boundary of your child. Taking a risk can be even mandating a prevention education in your in your organization if you're taking care of kids in your organization um, you know taking a risk can even mean making a report of sexual abuse you don't know what the outcome of that's going to mean so it is about taking a risk um, it's a risk to even talk to children about sex and sexuality at an appropriate age it's an uncomfortable conversation and then um, once you take those risks you got to seek out support you do um, exactly right. And that's the third empowerment skill. We all need support. Mothers who work two jobs and, um, and are trying to juggle, you know, their children, their children's safety, you know, putting food on the table, they need support. They need support from family members. They need support from friends. Um, we all need support when it comes to this, when it comes to this issue. Um, they need support when they make a report, whether, you know, someone makes a report, they need support you know, from the organization they work with when they make a, when they make a report. That's not an easy thing. Um, and, 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 but it's an important thing to do. And they must call Child and Protective Service, Child and Family Services. They are the reporting agency. But people need support when they go to do that. It's not easy. It's a big step. Um, support is a critical empowerment okay, skill. So I have a two-year-old and I have three cameras. Is that paranoid or looking out for my child? Um, and you know, I'm not judging, I'm just saying, because some parents are yeah. really paranoid. Yeah, and Some I, parents are germaphobes, some parents are like, don't touch my baby. Yeah. You know, some people are like weird. Yeah, well, we just talked about making choices. That's a choice but people have. But is three nanny cameras paranoid? Listen, I am not here to judge people. All we want is safe children. Children are in safe environments and whatever that takes and whatever people want to do, I, we can't control that. Um, you know, what, what we would say is, you know, the other, the other thing is you, you have a conversation directly to a babysitter and say, I have talked to my, ch if they're age of that age, I've talked to my children about their bodies and I've talked about their, nobody should touch or view or take pictures of their private body parts. Just letting you know that you're going to be babysitting my child or it can be a, making a choice saying, listen, you want to baby, so, wait, wait, Ciola. making a choice could be you, I want you to baby sit my children, but I really want you to do this three hour, um, this tra three hour training because a child might disclose to a babysitter before they even disclose to a parent that something has happened. So you want to equip your babysitter with what happens if the child ever tells. So those are the three empowerment skills, making choices, taking risks, supporting each other and darkness to light feels. It does take those three that will help you carry out five steps, as you said. The first one is we've got to find out what sexual abuse is. It isn't only penetration. It could be looking at images of naked images of children on a device. Um, you know, it can be 25% are women. Um, most cases are in isolated one-on-one -on -one situations. Sex offenders don't do this in front of other people. It's their shame, their secret. They're going to hide it. They're going to look for that isolated one-on-one. -on -one. So you want to scan your environment. That you is really about learning the facts. You talk about teaching children to self-advocate. Yeah. At what age, do? Well, age four. Really? Your body is very special and private. Nobody touches you in your private areas. And if they do, you come and tell mommy. That's well, self-advocating. Some, some children don't know the difference between a good touch and a bad touch. Well, first of all, no one should be touching them in their private body parts, um, except mommy, daddy, doctor with mommy and daddy there. Um, you know, and you explain what that means. Um, those, are, those are private body parts. Um, and, and a child can understand that, you know, that they are very special and, um, and they shouldn't touch others. It's not only about nobody touching them, 
they shouldn't do that to others. That's a very important message to let children know um, that it, those areas are private and special. Um, you know, learning the facts um, is the first step. The second step is what do we do to minimize the opportunity? Because sexual abuse is preventable. There, there are things that we can all do. And then the third step, as you know, as you heard, was talking about it, right? Just what we talked about. Talk to your children about body safety. Talk to other adults um, who are going to take care of your children. Um, have that conversation on your on on what your boundaries are for your children. Um, and 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 also talk to or organizations who take care of your children about where where are their policies. Where can you find a copy of their policies? Every organization who opens their doors to our precious children should have po safe policies. Every single one of them. They should have codes of conduct. They should have social media policies. They should have transportation policies. If you're transporting children, there should be you know safe guidelines. If you're taking children off island, there should be policies. And, sh and parents have a right to ask for those policies because these are, they, these are their children. Like you have every right to ask about those policies. There was every a, organization should have them. There was a section in there where it said child sex abuse is the biggest health problem today. And they listed symptoms. Yeah, uh, run that down for me. Well, symptoms can, you know, it, it really varies. Um, Every survivor's journey is different. Right. We talked about it in the last show. Sure. Um, you know, sexual promiscuity. It could be eating disorders. It could be drug addiction. It could be, um, you know, um, alcoholism. It could be, um, you know, not being able to focus in school. It could be criminal, you know, it could be anger. Um, it could be health issues because of stress and anxiety. Imagine a ch little child being abused. That's gonna that pain has to come out somewhere. As a news reporter, though, it sparked my ears when one of the participants um, or somebody asked about, you know, who puts me on the beam in gymnastics. You know, you hear a lot of reports today about sexual abuse in gymnastics. Scantily dressed girls, you know, you coach handling them, you know, but that was raised in your workshop. Yeah, and and the reason is because, you know, when did we ever ask permission to touch children? When did we say, I want to, is there another member on the, in the video, it talks about they were a coach and, you know, they ask they, before they show a mechanical move. Is it okay? Is it okay? We never asked children if it was okay. We just grabbed them, put them up, you know. And it's not only gymnastics. I, I don't want to point out gymnastics. You know, many youth serving organizations and sporting organizations ha have, you know, have seen this. And I think, um, you know, we, we just weren't having conversations about this years ago, Ciola. Now we're being educated in this. We know what to look out for. But youth serving organizations need to send a very clear message. You know, you come work here, we have policies, we have more eyes on our children. These are the policies that you have to b abide by. And if anybody starts, pro you know, um, you know, you know, not following those guidelines and those policies, that's a red flag. Keep an eye on that. Um, people need to be reminded about the policies, um, you know, but we're also think about this. We're encouraging children to speak up with this was a conversation that just didn't happen years ago. And that is what silenced. No, but you know, I've heard, I've heard young men who have young daughters drive across a certain middle school and say, oh, that one's button up nice. I can't wait to hit that. And these men have children. And it's, it's discussed like it's a, it's, it's a feat. It's some sort of, like, what is that? Is that, is that how sick we've become as a society? What is that? How, how could any man who has a young child talk like that? Well, that's someone who has sex on their mind 24-7, in my view. They can't get it out of their mind. They think about it constantly. So you think about it with young people? Anything they can get. I mean, think about that for a minute. Think about the people in, in our lives. That, that's all they talk about is sex, whether it's with a child or an adult. And they've got it. They've got it on their mind 24-7. They can't stop thinking about it. Well, so they've got to make comments. They're, they're visualizing it. Is that a it. sickness? It, well, I think it's an or addiction. An obsession. I, I, I think I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. You know, it, it it's you know they've got to think about the damage that that does, and think about why are they thinking about this all the time? Why do they care whether a young fourteen year old is growing in their breasts? Why why would they even bring that up? 
Why, why would that even be See, a conversation? Because you know they why. have it on their mind. <laughs> They're thinking about that all the time. Otherwise, they wouldn't even raise that issue. They wouldn't even they wouldn't even talk about that if that wasn't something they think about all the time. You can really but lead it's a lot, somebody. It's promoted so hard in the media. Like, Mac the Stallion is scantily dressed. Cardi B is scantily dressed. Oh, these, some of these women have daughters who they don't let listen to their trash. But they're feeding it to the people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, I mean, I also want Snoop wanted... Doggy Dog doesn't let but... his children listen to him talking about sipping gin and juice. It doesn't happen. They're going to private schools in the suburb. They don't live in the hood. So it's a real crisis in the black community when we look at what's being embedded as our culture. This so-called rap music now is, is promoting gen like lyrical homicide. Yeah. The children don't have an opportunity. It's just mixed messages for them. It's a mixed message. Um, it really is. And, but one thing I do want to say, you know, um, I don't care what a child's dressed like. I don't care what a child says. Um, they're children and they need to be protected and we need to teach them. We need to teach them about body safety and, um, and provide them with value to let them know that they are very valuable and that is not where we find love because it's never going to be filled. <laughs> it's, sex is never going to make someone feel loved like forever. That, that, <laughs> I mean, that, looking for love in all, all the wrong places. places. Okay, we'll be back to wrap up in just a moment. Stay with us.